Hey, what's up guys? It's Lawrence. Thanks for stopping by my channel. If you like what you see, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Observing obscure observances. Hello everybody, this is Lawrence Ross looking at the calendar for March 30th. And uh, it is well, this this is a bit of a this is a bit of a cumbersome one. This is a long one. Great grass is always browner on the other side of the fence day. Wow, that's a that's a new one. I've never heard that phrase. And I'm gonna try and go on this page here, see what it says. Oh, where the heck is it? Oh, where is it? Where is it? I had it a moment ago. Uh, hang on a minute. Where is it? This. Uh, boy. Scroll down. There we go. All right, here's the explanation. <clears throat> you may have heard the phrase, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Well, it turns out that might always be the case. Sometimes things may actually be browner, and today's holiday acknowledges that. Today is for taking stock in things you do have, whether it be a roof over your head, a family, a job, or something else. Yeah, well, I don't know exactly why they call it the grass is browner. I mean, if the grass is brown, that means it's dead. So wouldn't it technically be you thinking of the stuff you don't have or the things that you used to have? I don't know. I'm kind of mixed up in that one, but I don't know. What are the colorblind people feel about that one? Anyway... National Doctors' Day. Yes, this is very important now today. What with the whole uh, COVID-19 happening. Very important that we acknowledge the doctors, the men and women in the medical service. They are doing their best. They're doing what they can to make sure that we are all safe and sound. And hopefully something like this doesn't happen again. National I Am In Control Day. Also known as I Am In Control Day observed annually on March 30th. And this document here says the purpose of National Control... Okay, the purpose of National I Am In Control Day is twofold. On one hand, it is celebrated by people taking control of their own lives. They reassess what they need to do in order to gain full control of their lives, and they then make changes so that they can proclaim, I am in control. On the other hand, the holiday marks the anniversary of the day when an assassination attempt was made on Ronald Reagan on March 30th, 1981. On that day, Secretary of State Alexander Haig infamously said, I am in control, while answering a question in the press briefing room following the shooting. President Reagan was shot outside the Washington Hilton Hotel as he was walking to his limousine by John Hinckley Jr., who wielded a .22 mag, uh, caliber pistol. The bullet hit Reagan's left lung and almost hit his heart. Reagan at first didn't know he was shot, but was rushed to George Washington University, where he walked in, where he walked in on his own. Oh, yeah, where he walked in on his own. He also joked with doctors and his wife, Nancy, by saying, Please tell me you're Republicans, and, honey, I forgot to duck. He had surgery, recuperated, and returned to the White House 12 days later. After the shooting had occurred, when President Reagan was at the hospital, Secretary of State Alexander Haig convened a meeting of the National Security Council in the Situation Room at the White House. There he claimed that the power of the presidency rested in his hands by saying, The helm is right here. And that is right in this chair for now, constitutionally, until the vice president gets here. Soon afterwards, Haig went to the press briefing room where he attempted to reassure the press and the public that the government was functioning without the president and vice president's president uh, and the vice president, George H.W. Bush, was flying back from Texas at the time, who was making the decision for the government right now, he was asked. He replied, let's see, here's what he says. <clears throat> Constitutionally, gentlemen, you have the president, the vice president, and the secretary of state in that order, and should the president decide he wants to transfer the helm to the vice president, he will do so. As of now, I am in control here in the White House, pending return of the vice president, and am in close touch with him. If something came up, I would check with him, of course. It was a poor choice of words. <laughs> it was a poor choice of words. He may have been control at the White House, 
but to some, his words seemed like he was usurping authority. Some also thought he was alluding to presidential succession, and if that was the case, he was not constitutionally correct in saying that the Secretary of State followed the Vice President, the Speaker of the House, and the President pro temper. Uh, uh, hold on, I messed it up. Followed the Vice President. The Speaker of the House and then the President pro temper of the Senate followed the Vice President in the presidential line of succession. Haig later said that he hadn't been talking about who is in line to be president in case President Reagan died, but was talking about who is in charge of the executive branch of the government How the president, while the president was incapacitated and the vice president had not yet arrived. Additionally, Haig's full statement was taken out of context, surprise, surprise, by many who only seem to remember the words, I am in control from it. Ironically, the room where Haig... Okay, hang on a second. Uh, let's see. Ah. Uh, ironically, the room where Haig gave his statement is now named the James S. Brady Press Briefing Room. James Brady, who was Reagan's press secretary, was one of three other people who were hit by Hinckley's bullets on that day. He suffered permanent brain damage and had to leave his position. He went on to become a gun control advocate, and the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act was named in his honor. So there you go. And I think when James Brady died, I think they could have technically charged Hinckley with a homicide. But for some reason, I don't know. I don't know if it was reason. Well, I, well, I think it was reason of insanity because he claimed, because he claimed Jody Foster told him to do it. Well, that was only because he had watched the movie Taxi like 600 times. And he saw Jody Foster as that prostitute. And for some reason he was drawn to her. And that's how that happened. There's actually an episode of American Dad where Stan actually has to shoot jo uh, Reagan. It's kind of weird. All right. National Virtual Vacation Day. Uh, there really isn't much here, but yeah, but yeah, that's, that's something you could always do. You could always, like, I don't know, read a book or go online, look at brochures. I don't know how you observe that. Pencil Day. And let's see, on today's date, it, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. I didn't know about this. And a lot of people, you know they say, I need more lead in this pencil? Well, that's not technically true. It's graphite, not lead. But either way, <clears throat> here's, here's, a little, here's a little thing on the pencil, <clears throat> or pencil day. <clears throat> on today's date in 1858, the United States Patent and Trademark Office granted Hyman Lippmann the first patent for a modern pencil with an attached eraser. There have been many changes to the pencil prior to this, and there have been many since, but it is on this anniversary that we celebrate Pencil Day. It is believed that the first modern pencil was made in England in the 16th century, being made soon after the discovery of a large deposit of graphite there. Solid graphite from the deposit was, oh, okay. Solid graphite from the deposit was cut into chunks to make the pencils. They became known as lead pencils, just as graphite pencils are known today, even though there was no lead in them. These early pencils were nothing more than graphite chunk wrapped in string or sheepskin. In the mid-16th century, the graphite began being placed in hollow wooden sticks. The string, stick, and, uh, yeah, uh, hold on, this is, this is a tough... The, okay, try this. The string, skin, or stick stopped the graphite core from breaking or rubbing off on hands. Sticks were eventually replaced with the wooden casing we find on pencils today. During the 17th century, pencils began being made out of powdered graphite, and soon afterward, clay started being added to alter the hardness of the graphite rod. Pencils were first mass-produced in Germany. It wasn't until after the American Revolution that pencils were made in the United States, and they weren't produced on a mass scale there until the late 19th century. Red cedar was the main wood that was made to use them. Today, incense cedary is the most common wood made to use pencils, with base wood and altar sometimes being used as well. The thin wood casing is shaped... Okay, <clears throat> the thin wood casing is shaped syringe, sy wait, the thin wood casing is shaped cylindrically, hexagonally, or triagonally. 
The first pencils were painted yellow because this color was associated with royalty and honor. Yellow is still the most common color for pencils. A graphite pencil can write about 45,000 words or a line of about 35 miles long. There are many other types of pencils besides graphite. Charcoal, colored, and grease are just a few of the other types of pencils. More than 14 billion pencils are produced around the world annually. Today, we celebrate the implements that have helped us dry, draw, write, and color for centuries. There you go. I've used some pencils in my day. I've used uh, pens, and I've also used Sharpies. As a matter of fact, whenever I do go out to restaurants and things of that nature, I, I almost always take a Sharpie with me. Why do I do that? The answer is very simple. I want to have something at the ready when the uh, waiter or waitress comes by with the check. And I have a little signature block that I uh, use to align the paper. And I say, okay, just put that everybody else would sign. All right, there you go. Give him, a ha uh, uh, give him a John Hancock. Boom, there you go. All right. Uh, let's see. Going back. All right, what are we sitting at here? Okay, let's see. Pencil day, did that. Take a walk in the park day. I don't know what to say about that. Other than just be careful if you're going to do that, folks. Enjoy your walk in the park today, if you're going to take one. Then there's turkey neck soup day. I don't know about that one. Uh, there's no information on that one. Then there's World Bipolar Day, and I imagine that deals. And I imagine that deals with people who have <clears throat> bipolar disorder, uh, and uh, well, I'm just gonna say that uh, there are people who have bipolar disorder who are able to function just fine in life, and. My philosophy, I'm just going to be a quick little inside of my philosophy real quick, then I'm going to cut this. Uh, my philosophy is very simple. It doesn't matter to me if you're watching this and you have bipolar disorder, you have any sort of physical issue, any sort of mental issue, it doesn't matter to me. Just as long as you treat me with respect and you're good to me, then everything else will fall into place. I'm Lawrence Ross. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, it's Lawrence. Well, that's the end of the video, but before I go, I want to thank you guys for checking out the content. If you like, you can check out my radio show every Friday evening at 7 p.m. on razradiolive.com. That's R-A-S, radiolive.com, radiochaos.net, and in this case, it's chaos with a K. K-A-O-S, radiochaos.net, or nonamenetwork.net. It's called the LRWS, and check it out. We also have a store, teespring.com, T-E-E, spring.com, forward slash stores, forward slash LRWS. And if you want, you can check out my Patreon page, patreon.com, forward slash LRoss1987. Thanks for watching.